Hello everyone, today we're gonna try and fix this TV from my friend Jonathan. Uh, this is the model. Let's see if we can get this a shot at this. It's a Toshiba uh, LC4651FDA. It's a 47 inch uh, LED TV, uh, 46 inches actually. And the symptoms is basically that the front panel here, I mean, when you turn it on, it blinks the lights as it is supposed to, but it doesn't respond to any command. I mean, it doesn't turn on, or even with the remote control, it doesn't do anything. So, we're gonna check, we're gonna start with the basics, just check the voltages at the and the power source and see what's going on. But I'm probably gonna focus then in the there's a little board in here, which is the touch panel on the other side here. Uh, where we see the problem, I mean, it doesn't respond to anything, so I don't know, maybe there's something wrong in there. So let's have a look and see if we find anything. Alright, so as usual, we're gonna start with the power supply. Uh, as you guys can see, there's a lot of caption caps here, so these are always suspect. Uh, but, well, I'm just gonna try and get some, measure some of the radius. Looks like this connector here is the main connector that takes, uh, energy here to the main processor board or well there's a tuner and etc here uh, so yeah looks like this is the label for this connector even though it has only five pins this has like six labels but I'm gonna try and see if I can correct this somehow so assuming last pin here is ground second pin there should be 12 volts positive so if I measure that I get zero so yeah, I'm gonna try now measure the other pin here, which is supposed to be five volts. And let's ramp it up. It's going up. It's starting to stabilize. Hmm. That's interesting. It's reaching about five volts. Well, kind of strange, but anyways. And then there's another ground, it looks like, yeah. And then there's a PS on, which I believe is like a logical level to mean power supply on. And that is at 3.3 volts, so it does look like a logical one. Let me just measure this 5 volt radio again. Yeah, now it's 5 volts spot on, so I don't know what's the, what's the deal in here, but looks like the 12 volts radio is gone i don't know so yeah the the power supply does look suspect uh suspicious so yeah i think we're gonna now take it apart and have a look and see if i can do any more troubleshooting i wish there were more task points in here i did try and measure the uh the output transistors in here uh i think middle pin is ground and if i take in there's a label there. You see there it seems there's no nothing coming in in the uh, regulator here. Neither AC nor DC, so and nothing out of course. I think one of these did measure something, which is the 5 volt radio, but the other radio seemed to be gone. So yeah, I don't know what the deal is here, but it definitely looks like the power supply is gone and something I noticed when taking some when looking doing a visual inspection of oh yeah here this is minus five minus five as well output yeah. I don't see any minus five rail here but anyways yeah again minus five and 5 volts, yeah. So, what I did notice is that this capacitor here, well, I mean, it seems to have a little bulge in it. I'm not quite sure how I get it shows on camera, but when I put my finger in here, it looks like there's a little bulge in here, in this. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have a look at this cap. It's looking a little bit suspicious. It's not an electrolytic cap, I think, but it does look a little bit suspicious, so... I'm going. Maybe I'm gonna take this uh, power supply apart and uh, have a look at it. 
All right, yeah, so I mean, we took the board off here. Um, I'm just gonna remove this capacitor here and, and measure it just to make sure, because it does look like it has a little bulge in here. So yeah, I'm gonna take it out and have a look. And, and then see, I mean, I don't know if I have a replacement, but if it measures bad, I'm gonna purchase one tomorrow and then um, replace it and try again, but yeah. Let's have a look, capacitors are always suspicious, so. All right, let me get into it. All right, so we, we took the capacitor off here. Uh, it is supposed to be uh, 27 nanofarads uh, capacitor. And, well, I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up, but it's really... Maybe the light is better here, right? It's really... You kind of can see it started to... The, the lid here started to lift off a little bit as well so yeah it does seem that some pressure tried to escape this capacitor so it's very likely it's gone and indeed when I measure it it is supposed to be 27 and a fart and it's measuring at oops, at something like 6.3 nanofarads so yeah, I think it's gone. I think I'm gonna replace it anyways, just in case, and then take from there. So let's see. All right, so here we go. Uh, I didn't find the exact replacement for this capacitor that we took off. Uh, this is a 27 nanofarads uh, capacitor. I found 33 nanofarads and 22 nanofarads. Uh, but I didn't find it. Ex I mean, the exact replacement neither by capacitance nor by voltage. This one is one kilovolt. And these are all 630 volts. I think it's going to be fine because this board is going to be powered with a, from a 127 volts uh, AC line. So I think it's going to, it's enough margin I uh, hear I guess. <laughs> I'm going to take a chance and do it and replace it anyways just to see what it, what it does. I did find the schematic for this power supply in a, in internet uh, by searching this model number here. This uh, KP5 plus L150C3-01. Uh, so yeah, I did find the schematic. It's pretty common actually. These boards looks like many manufacturers are using this uh, off China. I don't know who the manufacturer is. But anyways, uh, I did find the schematic. And surprisingly, the value that is supposed to go in here is actually 33 and a third. So they were using 27 uh, and it was fine, so I guess they have some margin here, so the capacitance value itself is not going to be a concern. I'm slightly concerned about the voltage, but I think it's going to be fine because of the reasons I just explained. So uh, let's go ahead and, and put it on here. I have my soldering iron ready to go already. Just put a dab of solder just to hold it in place and then I do a proper joint. Okay, now it's hot in place, let me just do it properly now. Redo this joint here. Okay, looks like a good joint. Let me just clip the leads here. All right, and I think, well, assuming this is all that is gone, we can now go ahead and and see if we're lucky and pour it up and see what it does. Hopefully it's going to be the only thing gone. 
and we're gonna be successful <laughs> so it's on let me just change my lead in here so we have 127 votes coming into uh, the mains line which sure is okay but and now let's see, we did have 5 volts working already before and it was clear from the schematic why the 5 volts is being generated through a different path in the, uh, in the power supply. Uh, this here I think it's going to be generating uh, a 12 volts radio and a 24 volts radio somewhere. So let me just see if I can find it somewhere. This connector as we saw before is the one that was going off to the uh, main board, the CPU board. And I think its connections are ground, and here should be 12 volts or something. Mm, nothing yet. Here's the 5 volts. Let me just see if it's alternating or. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there might some, be something else faulty still. Uh, let me just have a look in here. Let me try and see what's coming into this uh, transformer here. Oops. Yeah, we have nothing still coming into the transformer, so. Hmm. I'm afraid we might have this main controller circuit down here which could be gone I don't know so yeah because looking at, at the schematic I think this is the next thing that could be bad uh, so just check a couple more things in here before we move on well this is where the 5 volts radius are coming off And then if I'm not mistaken, it goes through this little fill right here. And there's this... Let me see here. Nothing here as well. Okay, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more troubleshooting. Uh, the capacitor was gone anyway, so we replaced it, uh, but it's not enough. We're gonna have to see what else is gone. So, all right, let me get into it. All right, so I, unfortunately, that didn't work. Just replacing the capacitor here. I was trying to f study or to look into some further things in here. I think, look, I mean, below this uh, heatsink here, there's a. Um, there's a controller circuit, uh, FSFR1700, I think it's a Fairchild controller for, uh, let me just look at that sheet here, it's a, uh, half bridge resonant converter, so I was looking into this uh, quickly, I mean it's, it's fairly complicated, uh, so I have to take a little bit more time to study what's going on. What I have already seen that caught my attention is that if I go to the pinout here, so the pinout, if you look at pin number two there, it's it's basically an enable disable pin, and it says this pin has to be above 0 0.6 volts for the IC operation to be enabled. So when I measure this pin in here, uh, I'm getting zero volts so I'm thinking whatever enables this uh, circuit is not enabling it so that might be the the root cause of the problem the capacitor was bad so it's good we replaced it but there's something else uh, that we have to check uh, I'm not yet sure if this circuit is gone or if it's just not enabled so I have to go uh, search a little bit deeper and study this the the functioning of the circuit a little bit more so i think i'll wrap up for now and then we'll come back with a part two video hopefully where we finally repaired it
or not let's see if we're lucky or not but I think I'm gonna stop for now and come back later alright thanks for watching